good, everybody? You already know what time it is. Thank you for tuning in to the WDRB Media, the voice of the community, the only station giving you double the information and the inspiration, and you listening to the Art of Ism. And I'm your humble esteemed host, Mac Ism. And I'm here with a real close friend of mine. I want to introduce you guys to Richard Randolph, a.k.a. Filmic Films. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Filmic Films, coming straight out the District of Columbia, a.k.a. Washington, D.C. You already know. Before we start off, I just want to just go ahead and do a little self-promo. My name is Mac Ism, R&B, new neo-soul, hip-hop artist, and I'm also a techie. I got a new single out called Can't Believe It. Going to be shooting a music video for it real soon. And my boy right here is going to help me out with that, you know, some behind-the-scenes footage. But you can check out my new song on www.macism.com. That's www.macizm.com. You can also reach me on Instagram at mac.izm. And you also can reach me on Twitter at underscore mac.izm. Rich, how, how can people reach you? bro so y'all if y'all want to check out some really dope film photos or check out youtube check me out on instagram and youtube at filmic feels and if you want to check out my website to see a little bit of everything www.filmicfeels.com yes sir hey look you know you're real established when you got your website tell people the name you, they get your stuff together i'm trying to tell you so today we're discussing the art of filmic feels so rich bro tell us a little bit about your background bro so Everybody, I grew up in Washington, D.C. I've been here almost my entire life. Like, I love the city. I love the people. I love go-go music. Trust me, you throw that, uh, you play that go-go, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, but no, nah, it's always a good time. It's really uh, a place where you see a little bit of everything around you. Okay. Now, yeah, I, I mean, I just got down here in the DMV area. You know, I was uh, I recently, I was raised, in, like, in North Carolina, but I was born in Little Merlin. So, you know, I had to come back to my roots and feel like I'm, I'm actually glad I'm back to my roots. I manifested that. When I was growing up in school, I was like, yeah, I got to come back here just because, you know, I felt like it was a part of part of me missing. And I'm glad to be back in this area. So, uh, bro, tell tell the people about your academia, bro. Like what school you go to? So uh, I graduated from the uh, Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. You know, when you graduate, you got to use a whole name. OK, that's OK. What, that's what we pay for, you know. Facts. Uh, but yeah, a.k.a. Virginia Tech. So graduated uh, 2019 with a degree in building construction. Nothing to do with photography at all, actually. Okay, I mean, but it is what it is, though, but tell us about your hobbies, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just, like, outside of um, my full-time job being, you know, construction or whatnot, like, I really love photography. Uh, it started off with digital at first, and then recently I've really found this love for film photography, which I honestly would put above digital just because the images have, like, this uniqueness to them, like, the color, the rendition, the grain, all of it. It's just something where, like, you look at back at it, maybe, like, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, something you show your kids, and then they'd be like, wow, that's a fire photo. Hey, facts. Yeah, no, you, you definitely get right with it. Uh, do you have any career goals currently? Man, um, once again, y'all, look, I told y'all, look, I'm from Washington, D.C. My heart is really in affordable housing. Uh, I currently work for a construction company, but I eventually want to transition into, like, maybe real estate development, possibly, but I just really want to give back to the city. Facts. And you always got to give back, man. Always uh, give back. That's what um, the WDB, our WDRB media platform is basically, you know, giving back to the community and allowing people to have their voice. You know, just to basically speak their own personal truths and stuff like that. So, tell, so right now, tell the viewers and people listening right now who's watching on Twitch. You know, like, like, tell them how we met, bro. Tell them, how, tell them how we met. Man, bro, I'm trying to remember like the exact place, bro. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I feel like we had to have met through expressions. Yeah, yeah, VT Expressions. Yeah, VT yeah, yeah, Expressions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, so VT Expressions was really an organization on campus that hosted a bunch of art shows. Uh, they hosted open mic night, you know what I'm saying? Just a place for the creative people to really gather on campus and just have a place to express themselves, right? And, uh, you know what I'm saying? This guy was a master student. I was still in, in my undergrad. And uh, we linked up, you know what I mean? And, like, you know what I'm saying? Bro just had a, a great energy that he brought to the room, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, we linked up and stuff. Uh, you know, later on, you know what I'm saying? Made some, made some music, you know what I'm saying? Some like dope, dope songs. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Tom, shout out Ethan. Um, Deborah Ethan, <laughs> yeah, that man is crazy. Oh yeah, man, we miss you, bro. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Overall, just you know what I'm saying. I met my boy Macism, uh, like I said, through Virginia Tech, and from there, like I said, we've been cool since. Facts. Now it was it was it was really wild. We actually put a mixtape together too. Uh, volume one is actually uh, B T I I D I C. Did I say it right? B T D I T C. B T digging in the crates. Shout digging out. in the crates. Shout, shout out, out Craig. to Craig. Shout out uh, Big Bro Freddie P. Shout out Kwame. Yeah, Kwame. Shout out everybody over there. Uh, the uh, Virginia Tech organization getting the, everything, the, all that stuff together is really dope, and I'm really glad that they had a platform right now just to bring creative people together. So, uh, so right now, you know, so I always got to do this. So what, what's, what's your favorite song by me currently, bro? Like, your favorite song by me currently? 
Man, I feel like like the joint that we just shot the video for, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just like that, bro. That was that was really like that song. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like that was like it. It just it felt right. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I feel like that one just it felt right, bro. I about to say I about to say that was a commercial. You know what I'm saying? But you like I remember you like right before you got over, you was like honestly like far as lyrical wise. You said Painkiller was your your favorite song by me. Oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 bro. Let me let me scratch. Let me run it back. Zip, 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 right? Nah, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> nah, for real though, nah. I, I think that like Painkiller, bro. Like I feel like your verse, bro, was just really really solid, bro. Like I was like, yo, like this boy leveling up. You know, say he doing Come his on thing now. on that one. So yeah, I really like Painkiller a lot. So Painkiller is the song that you know what I'm saying. He actually helped me out with far as like promo and stuff like that. So like right now we just about to jump into Painkiller featuring my bro Super. Let's get into it. Painkiller, painkiller. Say it's your painkiller, painkiller, painkiller. We feeling the same feeling, painkiller, painkiller. I'm using this pain, so I'm feeling the same. I'm with yeah. this pain, we just hop on this plane. Casually acting, I was just acting facts. He's smoking no stimulus plan. What am I doing today? Turning the news, the world in the villain state. Give me a break, need a mental escape. Is great, currently easing my pain. Fuck it, I made with the James. See, they ain't feeling the same. Yeah. Hop in the world, rolling this truck. See, when these bitches, I know they gon' tell. Grab me a fill, listen to Phil. Shooting like Curtis when I'm in the field. Now that we here, my power and purpose are honorable. Like you, Mohammed is here. Ain't no reason just to give in the fear. They're killing the weak, so I'm serving the real. Feeling like me, the world be giving to me. So fuck all these saving these trees. Rolling the pound the week, under a shade. Similar to money to me. Nigga get paid, ain't no more slaving for free. Earning my master this week. Killer by your boy Mac Ism featuring Super. You can get that on all DSPs right now. All right, all right. So, like I said again, we are discussing the art of filmic feel. So, what does filmic feel mean, bro? Like, what what does that mean, bro? So, when I was going through this whole thing of like trying to figure out my Instagram name, like I was like the previous one, right? You mm -hmm. know, say my digital page was Capital Captures, right? So the DC, and then you capture, right? I'm capturing moments, capturing images, right? Mm -hmm. A moment in time. Filmic feels to me was really like, yo, like when I was describing film earlier to you, I was like, yo, these images, they really kind of like touch you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they kind of, they look different than the digital. Like I had to figure out a way to separate that. So it's more like the film, filmic, right? And then like the feels, the feelings is what it is what it's short for. So yeah, like filmic feelings is really what I really wanted people to uh, be able to feel when they see my stuff, you know? Okay. So like, so how long have you been like dedicating like to this craft, bro? Uh, photography in total has been like maybe six, seven years. Six, um, seven years? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like in total, it's probably longer than that. But like actual time with the camera, we're getting paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> six, so, seven. Speaking of the camera, then like, so how, like, what's the cost to be the boss, bro? Like, how much money have you poured into your craft? Man, we talking like like for real, for real? Like, yeah, bro. Let's be honest. I would say probably like for real, for real. Like I'd say like if I had to add up everything, like since I started. Mm, I don't know, a little less than ten thousand dollars. Ten k? Yeah, like for sure. She, 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 she. No, that's a, that's definitely a lot, bro. Like, um, like what type of cameras do you have right now? Um, so you know, what I mean, right now for my for my digital, right? I know I'm filming fields, but I still gotta plug the digital because that that's still something I do. Mm -hmm. Um, I I shoot on right now what's called a a, a Panasonic uh, Lumix S5, with, right, which is their new full frame camera. It's really solid, um, but for my film cameras, right? I actually brought some here to show y'all. So hold on a second. All right, cool. So um, I don't know if everybody can see this, but right now I have a Bronica SQA. Bronica is a Japanese brand. Um, SQ standing for square. Um, so all the images come out in a six centimeter by six centimeter square image. So this was really like my first medium format film camera. Uh, it's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like. Everything is so tactical, so mechanical, right? Like, that's one thing I like about film is that, like, it slows you down. Mm -hmm. It's not like digital where I'm just like, I can have a memory card and I just fill it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. for this joint, you only get 12 shots on a roll of film. Mm. So, for every roll, that means that, like, I got to make every... Accurate. Yeah, every shot has to count for real. So, uh, yeah, this is, like, my favorite one and this is my baby. So, it's the main one. Like you miss all the shots that you don't take. <laughs> what, what else you got with us? Cool, cool, cool. I uh, just bought... Let me show y'all my newest one. Sorry, you don't want to drop the money. 
Um, <laughs> Facts. So uh, my newest one that I got is called, this is called the, the Fujika uh, GW690. This is the version one. Uh, so this is a still a medium format camera, but it's a six by nine camera. So it's instead of it being a square, it's a rectangle, right? But it's a larger image. So when you have a larger image, that means you can crop in more. There's more detail in the image. And uh, this one, it has a fixed lens. So like it only has one focal length it's used, but that's also part of the fun of it because you're like, you're creative with it. Mm -hmm. You got to use one focal length to make every single shot count. So, so the people that can't see this camera right now, this is a very huge camera. Like you got to look at it like in relation like, to, to my like, head. It's probably a little bit smaller than my head. Like, like, like I have a big head. Like here's my phone for reference. Like <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Do you have any other cameras with you? Yeah, yeah, I got I got one more. All right, cool. So for my, for my uh, my last one, so I have that's cool. I like that. Yeah. So this joint right here. So this is the uh, this is the Fuji GS GS six four five S. Right. There's uh this is the manual version of it. So there's to make another one that's like closer to like a point and shoot camera, um, a little bit less thinking and just like just click and shoot. Right. With this one, all of the settings are on the top. Uh, has like this nice little crash bar here, which they thought about because you know sometimes when like older stuff is more delicate, um, you know you don't want to break your stuff, so they put like the crash bar on there, which should I thought was a, really funny. Actually. They should have put a whole cage around that joint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But this one, like I said, it's a six by four by five, right? So one thing I want to point out, like I told you about the previous camera, was so my first one, twelve shots. This one right here, right, the Texas Leica. This one shoots uh, eight shots total, right? And then boy. <laughs> Maybe I got that crash bar on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, for this one, you get a total of 15 photos total. So like, usually I'll, I'll use each one of these for something different. So mm -hmm. like, if I'm kind of like testing out an idea or trying something out, I'll take this one because I get more shots on it, right? Okay. Because it's a smaller image. So six by four by five versus six by six versus six by nine. So like, all different ratios in what you create. Um, so pretty much what I do is, uh, like I said, small camera for testing something out. For my money making stuff, either the Bonica or the Texas Leica. Okay, that's dope. So like, so like, how does like fashion play into like bringing your vision to life when you're taking these photos? Man, like, so what the old rich would have did would have been like, hey, let's shoot today, no plan, mm. pop up, no plan, right? The the new rich, the the, the rich that really thinks out his ideas. Um, fashion is something that inspires me because like you want to be able to match like your backgrounds, you want to be able to use things like color science, like understanding how certain colors, complementary colors go together. Like we all learn the color wheel in school, but like if you like, some of us, <laughs> <laughs> but if you do the research on the actual color wheel, like it's not just the main one where you just have your primary color. So like if you primary color, secondary colors, tertiary colors, like all of those have different combinations. Like even for like the colors side by side, they have a name for that. Mm -hmm. So like when I create a shoot, I'll probably come up with a concept first, write out my concept using Pinterest or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'll go and I'll take it to my client and be like, hey, does this work for you? Um, here's what I have in mind, here's the location, you know what I mean? Then from there, we'll go and figure out like outfits to fit the vision, right? Mm -hmm. Like, y'all can use this idea, I'm gonna throw it out there, I am gonna shoot this, but like, one thing I've been trying to get into more is black and white photography. Mm -hmm. So what I was thinking about with that was, there is a, like a, I wanna think of do like a black mafia, style shoot like okay. you know what i'm saying like something like real gritty right yeah i, I get i get pain I, I get i definitely get pain and like like grittiness from black and white it's, it's so much it's so much you can get like from a photo that it's just the straight black and white because you're not focusing on the colors that usually distract you from the actual image and the visuals that you're trying to like portray it's actually you you get more into like what is the meaning and what is and what am i feeling what am i getting from this when it's usually just black and white so i, I think that's actually a dope thing so i i want to be a part of that that photo shoot you know what I'm saying? I got some mafia attire. I look like Biggie out there. I'm trying to tell you. You know what I'm saying? We can. I, I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down, bro. Let's let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. So how does like scenery and lighting like goes into like your um your art and your craft with um filmics? Sure. Filmic feels. No, no, you good. So when it comes down to scenery, right? So, um, even if you take a white wall, right? Mm -hmm. A white wall can still complement your your subject, your image, right? It's all about like how are you using it, right? Mm -hmm. Most times I would probably use a white wall if I want my my subject to stand out more than the background, right? Mm -hmm. Versus like if I'm doing something outdoors, let's say like someone has a really nice car, right? Let's say somebody has like a Maserati, right? Something crazy, I don't know, Bugatti. I know there's probably crazier cars, you know I'm not a car guy. But 
<laughs> um, I probably wouldn't want the flashy thing, right? I would probably want the outfit to match the actual car, right? Okay. So it's like when you think of your scenery and how it goes together, like you really want them to complement each other. Sometimes you can do it where the things can actually be separate or not connect at all. Mm -hmm. But if you still use your colors, if you still use your framing, it can all still come together, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about what type of story do you want to tell. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So, okay, so I, another question is off the top, top of my head because I, I just have this idea. Sure. So um, so when it comes to, like, you know, like, because most of the time when I think of fo photos and I think of modeling, I think of uh, females, uh, women, and they, you know, and they, and they're in their element. So, like, how does it, how does it go, like, when you're, when you're working with women? Because I know it's different from working with men and working with women. So how, how is it when you're working with women? Yeah, no, I got you. Um, I think that generally, like, I think that, working with a woman is more versatile than working with a man, right? Like, uh, to separate the other part first. So, like, if you work with a man, usually it's, like, poses are a lot more simple. Uh, you know what I mean? Expressions may be more, more simplistic or, or less, but I feel like uh, when you're working with, like, a woman, usually sometimes, like, I can do something with hair. I can do something with makeup. I can do something with the outfit. I can do something with accessories, right? Like, I feel like there's a lot more depth to what I can create with a woman versus like what I can create with a man overall. Mm. And coming from the man perspective, when we watching photos of women, I think the only thing we actually focus on is the body, yadi, 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 yadi. It's more than that, bro. It's definitely it's, more it's, than it's that. It's more than that, man. It's definitely like, more than that. Like, like for me, man, it's more like yes, like like someone's like for me personally, like I I probably would not shoot like boudoir, which is more like of a lingerie type of shoot. You know what I'm gotcha. saying? Of course, okay. like okay. like not just because I have a girlfriend, right? You said, <laughs> you said, you said what, what was right. the word again? Say that word again. Boudoir. 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 That's the right. Boudoir. Um, but but just because it's something that like I feel like I'm gonna I, start saying that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's gonna be your ad lib now. Boudoir. 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 <laughs> All right, but um, but no, I'm, I'm saying like for me, it's like I like to focus on like how can I make my subject look right? Because sometimes like boudoir is more focused on the body. Like yeah. that's literally like about making women feel beautiful, making them feel body confident, right? Exactly. Like those things are all dope. But it's just I feel like Love for it. me, I like to focus more on the clothing, the aspect, the story, right? Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's like for me, it's like if you think of music. It's like there's people who focus on beats and there's people who focus on lyrics. Yeah. Like I know you met somebody who definitely like, yo, I love this rapper, but they really just love the beats. You know, what I'm exactly. They, they, they like the vibe. It really be like that though. It really be like that. And yeah. I, and, it, and it's kind of hard sometimes to separate between the two. But I'm definitely the person where if the beat catch me, I'm loving the beat. Then I go back and actually listen to the substance of the words that somebody's saying. For example, Kodak Black. Kodak Black, some of his songs like the beats go crazy. Then I go back and listen to him like I cannot get with this. And but that's you know that's a, that's, a, that's part of the art you know sometimes it's not it depends on what he's talking about the subject he has times where it's like not really crazy actually getting more emotional being vulnerable about who he is but you know sometimes it's really not so like speaking of that so like it's all about the timing and I said body yadi yadi when you basically mean that you know body shaped like an hourglass here's another song called time which is also one of Richard's favorite we're gonna get into that right now let's play time by Macism featuring Trey Armstrong. Sometimes I get lost with time So here's a reminder that I can find myself again My life is moving too fast I try to slow down I can't run from my past These suckers, they be trying to drown us A young black Simba It was cold but I always carry more embers I never fold, times were tough I had a cold winter From sleeping on the floor but never holding splinters Can go a day without eating cause I'm a born winner And I can see it in your eyes, you not built for this You had times like me but you just 
just won't equip See I came from the Lord, so I prayed to the Lord It was nights nice like this when I usually write like this Change my time I spent so I get the ice my wrist So when them hard knocks come, yeah I fight won't quit Cause I'm usually always thinking about better things Maybe a woman and a child can settle me But no slowing down, no settling Cause I gotta get this money so she can marry me one time my life is moving too fast I try to slow down I can't run from my past These suckers, they be trying to drown us That's why they try to surround us Just keep moving Ain't no point in losing My time, my time Yes, sir Yes, sir, and that was my time featuring Jimmy Bars, aka Trey Armstrong. That's my brother, you know what I'm saying? From our album that we did together, EP called Patience. Definitely check that out, it's on all platforms right now. So, like, we if you're just tuning in right now, we're still talking about the art of Phil McPhills, and I got my bro Richard Randolph, aka Phil McPhills, with us, you know what I'm saying? So, let's just get back more into it. So, so Rich, bro, like, so. What like so? What's next for Mr. Phil McPhills? What's next, bro? What's next on your agenda? Really, man. Like one thing I've always wanted to do, bro, is like I told myself earlier, it's like I want to get published somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going about it a different way. Like the old rich would try and get published through like a magazine, right? Like for me, when I do say published, I do mean like a publication. Mm -hmm. But like I would rather put out a book. You know what I'm saying? Get a book published. That's my goal now. Okay. Right? Like, I want to put out a book, like, coffee table, you know what I'm saying? Something ah, chill. Like that'd something. Be, that's fly. That's fly. That's fly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, so like, how do you see your business expanding, though? Do you have a vision for how you see your business expanding? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I mean, I really just want to, like, give back to people, man. Like I said, mm -hmm. that's where my heart is, right? Like, like, what's the point of me having all this talent if I can't share it with those around me? Facts. You know? Um, I would love to do an internship for somebody. You know what I'm saying? And, and part of me creating the internship is really me just grinding, man, and uh, finding opportunities to, like, where I can bring on somebody. You know what I mean? Of course, it might be something simple, like, oh, being a photo editor. You know what I mean? Something small, but, like, I want it to be, like, not just a photo editor, but, like, business acquisitions. You know what I'm saying? Like, marketing. Like, I want to mm -hmm. expand it, right, and really just teach people what I know so, I, so that they can help to better themselves. Okay. So how do, you, how do you know when you made it? Like, how do you know when Phil McPhills has become an established brand? Bro, look. I got God with me, bro. I already made it, bro. I just gotta step into it. Facts. Come on now. Come no. on now. But but <laughs> in all seriousness, bro, I feel like I feel like I already feel like I'm successful. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But there's always higher heights that I can reach. You know okay. what I mean? So I feel like straight up, I don't need approval from anybody. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like when I get that book, though, that's going to be like, all right, cool. Hey, look. That's the that's hey. big step. You know what I'm saying? Hey, this film, it feels, baby. You get, do you got your logo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do actually, man. Okay, so. Okay. I just want to make sure because you can't have a brand without a logo. Yes, sir. I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so like other than photography, like like what are some other aspects of who you are? Man, I feel like one of the, the biggest aspects to me, bro, is like I'm a people guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, And that's why I feel like I excelled at photography. You know what I mean? Or at least it came easier to me, right? Which mm -hmm. is because like when it came down to events, like making people in a pe – making people that you've never met feel comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's a skill. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like – to have somebody to, like, my job as a photographer is to help you feel the best you, you know what I'm saying? Help you bring out the best you in your images, and I feel like that's something I've really worked on over time. Okay. Now, that's 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 hard, bro. Like, I definitely, it's definitely weird sometimes when you, like, when you go to events and then there's, like, people trying to get you out your element to talk to people. Usually sometimes, you know, there's drinks and occasions, like mixers. That's the yeah. reason why they call them mixers, because there's drinks in the mix. And it it, 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 it allow you know it allows people to just to, just to just become their true selves you know it break down those barriers. So um, I remember you was talking about real estate earlier. So like, what do you what do you see what do you see yourself doing with real estate? Unfortunately, not real estate photography. I like for photographing people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but nah, man. One of my biggest things right now, man, is like I want to work on becoming a homeowner, man. I want to be able to teach. Uh, you know what I'm saying, young brothers and sisters about like the home ownership process and teach them those things. Then that way it's like we can create that generational wealth, right? Facts. Same way like I picked up the camera and that's a, a stream of income, right? I want someone to teach people how can their home be a stream of income. Mm, okay, no, we definitely got to talk about that because I think we, we was talking about this a while back, you know, like basically upgrading from an apartment to a condominium. 
because it's basically still an apartment, but you're you're paying for it to own you own that place. And you know, and if you want to move to like let's say a house, like a legit your first house, at least you can lease that out or like put it on Airbnb or something like that. Yeah. And like and just rent it out to people. Then that's boom, that's another stream of income. So like, okay, so speaking of another streams of income, like are you investing right now? Or and if you are, like what type of stuff are you investing in currently? Man, I'm 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 gonna keep it real. I'm I'm new to the investing space, right? I'm mm-hmm. I'm new to crypto, like I'm new to stocks and, and bonds and everything. Um, but overall, you know, bro, I feel like the biggest things that I've been really looking into is mutual funds. Okay. Um, just because, you know, like t- to my knowledge, a mutual fund is slightly different than a uh, an IRA or Roth IRA specifically in the sense of that Roth IRAs are tax free, you do pay taxes on uh, mutual funds, but you can still withdraw that money, you know what I'm saying, at any time versus a Roth IRA is for the purpose of withdrawing when you turn 59 and a half as a retirement plan specifically. Okay, so like what what technologies are you using to utilize like investing? Like far as like applications or far as like mediums like cell phones or you know laptop or desktops? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Um on my phone mainly, uh like I said, I've I've really started investing through something called M1 Finance. It's a pretty dope app. Um I found out about it um from this one guy on YouTube named Tommy Bryson. He's about like my age, right? Like I'm I'm 24. Um, and he's, you know, when you see somebody that has like five, five hundred thousand in the bank, you know, you, 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 you might want to listen. You might want to listen yeah, to the guy. Especially when they're like, you know, very close in age to you. It's kind of like, all right, cool. Like, how did you get here? Even if he took his money from his full time job and poured it back into the investments, the investments is what took him to that next level. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so like, are you on Robinhood or anything? Or you like got any other? I, nah, no, no, no Robin Hood. Okay, man. so no, nah, I've been I've been not schooling him because I'm still learning myself too as well, but I've definitely been talking to him about cryptocurrencies and what type of currencies to actually invest in. And know, uh, recently, like, um, far as, like, everybody wants to get Bitcoin, everybody know about Bitcoin, but there's other al- alternative coins out there that you actually can invest in. I know Dogecoin is, people think it is a joke right now, and but as of right now, it's, it's, it's popular because it is a joke. And the way I look at it is because, is a is a mean coin, but as far as the like far as our economy and how money is worth to people, it's a joke. Our money is a joke, so that's therefore like the idea behind that. The reason why the value is going up because it's a joke, and money is a joke. So therefore, that's why it, it, it just it just makes sense to me. I don't know if that that makes sense to anybody else, but um, Dogecoin is definitely thing to good to invest in right now. Safe Moon because it's quote unquote safe or whatever people think for what reason I do not know. Ethereum is definitely another joint to joint um, to get into too as well because it's, it's actually more secure and it's actually the platform was built out like well NFTs are, are part of that platform if you don't know what NFTs are it's non-fungible tokens and it's basically allowing artists such as yourself so like you can put all your photos and stuff into like a like a like a um like a set and sell those as a non-fungible token and the reason why like the difference between putting it on Instagram and putting it on the, uh, the 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 chain for Ethereum is basically you have this identified token that basically said this is the very authentic one. So because it, it has like this little bit tag on it, that's the only reason why it's authentic. And that's the, and that and that itself is like the way that like people you're following, they can actually purchase your art digitally through that. And it's making people tons and tons of money off of perpetuity. And you don't know what perpetuity is. It's just basically lifelong like like uh, dividends basically. So let's say you sold a set. 100 each and there's only like 10 and you're not doing no more photos like this in this particular set when somebody resell it to somebody else they can sell it for a thousand dollars depending on how you set it up you get 10 percent of that you get 20 percent of that that's how you set it up i mean you know and it, and it goes on and on so if somebody else sell that for more money you still get 10 percent or 20 percent of that so that's definitely something to look into non-fungible tokens nfts for all the artists out there digitally you can put like you can put mp4s videos you know pictures music all that stuff and that's something that i'm looking to myself too as well so like after like investing you know since we're growing on that as adults maturing adults into this world like like i remember you talking about giving back so do you have any like like strong like community plans as far as giving back right now um i'm i'm cool with putting ideas out here because i'm big on manifestation Mm -hmm. um but i really this tags back into real estate man but i really want to build a center not just a regular community center in dc but something that ties into a, you know a mix between like a trade school but then also something to help kids in the arts grow you know what I mean because I, I really one day when I step into being a father one day right like I want to let my kid know that there's nothing that you can't do in this world um, so for example like I don't want someone to feel like they can't pursue their art mm-hmm. like I want to understand you know yes 
parents are correct in saying you should have something to fall back on. I believe that that's very true. I'm glad I went to college. Facts. Shout out, shout out, mom. I love you. <laughs> but for real, like, mama. I, <laughs> <laughs> but for real, like, I really don't want people to be scared to pursue something because, like they said, scared money don't make no money. You know, so like, if you really believe that you're a talented person, I'm sure that there's a way that you can combine that with a business, which is what I want to like start to create opportunities for kids to have the mix between you have the talent let me help to teach you the business right mm -hmm. like let me put you and bring you to a place where people can come to see you you know what i mean like not necessarily a talent agency or anything like that per se but i want for different uh pathways to grow from like the center that i'm creating right okay. that's what i want in the future that's my big goal no that's dope that's definitely dope and like bro you got my you got my like full support about that you know because as i grow and become the entrepreneur an angel investor that, you know, I'm going to speak that into existence because that's what I'm trying to be, an angel investor at 44. At the time of 444, it could be p.m. or a.m., but it doesn't, it doesn't really <laughs> matter, you know, and that's and that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm sticking with. Um, also, bro, like, 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 I don't know most people know that you're a part of fraternity. You, you're, you're an alpha man. So, like, it's like how like how is that, like, like the community in that? How is being alpha? Yeah, man, I love being a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, man. December Founded on December 4th, 1906 at Cornell University. Um, yo, like, I really love the fact that, like, every single man that I've met that's an alpha, I feel like is literally an alpha in a sense, right? You know what I mean? Someone who their presence really stands out in the room. You know what I mean? Someone who, like, you can depend on, right? Somebody who genuinely is about the community, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen so many men, and don't get me wrong, the network is crazy. But, like, I love the fact that, like, no matter where I am in the world, I can find somebody that's a part of my fraternity, and we can find a way to connect, break bread, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and do business, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I love about it. It's like, and even, like, beyond the fraternity, like, people that's just, like, in the Divine Nine in general, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can find somebody you'll click with. Uh, shout out my boy, Brandon Sluian. Um, you know what I'm saying? He's also an artist, like, literally a painter. Uh, he's a member of Omega, Fi Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. And, um, you know, I mean, that's my guy. Like, I want to collaborate more with him. And, like, his paintings are fire, too. I've seen them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's my guy. So, you know, I really want to make sure that just, like, no matter what org you're a part of, man, like, it's 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 a it's a good look. That's what I say. It's a good look. Okay. No, that's that's dope. That's dope. Like, oh, I don't even know what to say, honestly, bro. Like, I, I remember seeing some of his stuff online, and I was just like, wow. But um, at this point in time, I actually, uh, this is the, basically the end of our show, bro. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, anytime. Um, like, do you, uh, how can people reach you again? You want to just throw that out real quick? Yeah, yeah, I got you. So once again, find me on Instagram at Phil McFeels, F-I-L-M-I-C-F-E-E-L-S. Uh, website, www.philmcfeels.com. Click the link tree in my bio. You'll find everything else. All right. And I just want to thank for everybody who's listening and tuned in to this third episode of The Art of Ism. You know, what? Well, basically I'm trying to plan, like, I plan on introducing you guys to some more inspiring people like my bro Rich here. You know what I'm saying? That it can either stimulate you mentally, physically, or spiritually. Continue to tune in every Friday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And please remember to connect with me by going to the WDRBmedia.com and click on the radio show and go to the tab and then listen to your boy. You know what I'm saying? Listen to us. We got some good stuff out here. Also, if you want to be a guest on my show, just, you know, or free advertisement, just email me at officialmacism at gmail.com. That's official, M-A-C-I-Z-M at gmail.com. And you've been listening to The Art of Ism, and I'm your host, Ooh. And I'm your host, Mac Ism, on the WDRB Media, the voice of the community, giving you double the information and its inspiration until next week. But I want to leave you with something, one thing. Got Ism? I know that, that we do. Stimulate your mind and your body and your soul just to give you something new. Y'all be best. Please. Peace. Good news.